gentlemen and ladies I thought I'd bring you along on an inspection today this here is a three-phase horizontal separator doing an inspection out here on site thought I'd talk a little bit about construction specifically construction methodology or design methodology and nameplates you guys know that I'm a big geek of nameplates I wanted to point out this three phase separator has multiple nameplates you see here here's the primary nameplate and if you look up there on the communicating chamber the gas dome or the secondary it also has a nameplate in fact it has its own national board and notice that it's flanged flanged down here at the bottom so it can be removed for both transportation and more importantly to replace the demister pad assembly that's in the very top well not the very top in the top before this out this line right here that's actually the outlet line for the top of the gas dome the top of the communicating chamber what I wanted to point out is because this is flanged in a lot of places you notice it's got a body flange over here on the right if we look down towards the fire tube or the fire box end it also has a flange so you've got three body flanges or three flanges on this body two of which are on the main chamber the firebox or fire tube down here the weir end or the sails end on this end and then you've got a flange there for the communicating chamber well, what I wanted to show you guys is okay I mean this is a standard three phase separator nothing too crazy about that it's a four foot diameter 16 16 foot long separator I'll walk down here show you a the same manufacturer constructing a similar size this one's three foot diameter 16 feet long the other one's four foot diameter 20 feet long what's interesting to note about this one is this one also has a nameplate on the main chamber it has not one but two communicating chambers with individual nameplates for the communicating chambers and then even more interesting is the fire tube or firebox fire tube assembly has its own nameplate and then when we go down here on the other end on the sales head or weir end it also has a nameplate same manufacturer and instead of having three nameplates this one has five what's even more interesting is the main chamber has a nameplate with a national board the fire tube has a nameplate but is not national boarded because it's listed as a part as is the sales end or the weir end is also a part without a national board registration but what's interesting is both the communicating chambers have national boards and are registered individually although they have no mechanical connecting flanges they are welded to the main chamber so even though when you were to first look at it or if someone was to see a drawing you would think this is a single pressure vessel when in fact it's actually three pressure vessels the communicating chambers are pressure vessels unto themselves that are welded to the main chamber that has body flanges one on each end but has parts attached to it 
what's even more interesting is this methodology, this, this design configuration, is by the same manufacturer as the one we looked at at the beginning. So that one has mechanical flanges connecting the communicating chamber, the gas dome, to the main chamber. And this one does not. Same manufacturer, only three years apart. What's interesting is people would say, oh, well, that's how the client ordered it. I'll point out that I'm on the same site and the same client ordered both of them. Yes, they're three years apart. They've both been re, um, relocated, uh, put on different sites. So this site is, in fact, the a third location. So both of these pieces of equipment came from somewhere else, and then they were relocated here together. Uh, different sizes, different configurations, different design methodology, different nameplate. Um, placements and plan um, and this service the it's not uncommon for the fire tube and the the weir end or sales end to uh, need to be replaced so I think the idea was is it made it possible so that you could replace components of the vessel or vessel assembly would probably be the more appropriate way to say it and you had nice and tidy methods what's interesting though is these don't have flanges to remove the gas domes the communicating chambers and when I look at the nameplates the nameplates for the communicating chambers are, right, are rated at 500 pounds, where the main chamber is only rated for 125. So, quite a bit different configuration. Anyway, I thought you guys might think that was a little interesting to see. And I uh, thought it'd be a good opportunity to review pressure vessel design and nameplate and registration methodologies. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Thanks. Bye.